Hello, uh, this is Stephen Van Kampen Lewis, and it is August 11th at about 2 p.m. Uh, I'm sitting here next to my podiums, which are growing outside here in Austin, Texas. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about them for a moment and to discuss about how I grow them and what I do to make them look like this, which is uh, some really good stuff, actually. So uh, first of all, uh, this, you'll notice it, it's kind of shady right now. The shade of my oak trees has just kicked in. It's about 2 p.m. So um, these guys behind me have been exposed to full sun with zero shade whatsoever from, from sunrise, which is you know around 7 a.m. Uh, until 2 p.m. And they, they love it. They, this is the type of environment that these certipodiums really, really thrive in. Um, as you can see behind me, I have, I have some pretty large ones. <clears throat> this one is Ceratopodium punctatum, and that is a, a very wide-ranging species uh, that actually grows in Florida. It is a native of Florida, and grows farther south even than that. Uh, in Florida, it grows epiphytically or, or attached to a tree. Uh, but I actually grow all of my Ceratopodiums. In fact, most Ceratopodiums are terrestrial, so I grow them in a terrestrial mix. Uh, in, in a clay pot here, a shallow clay pot, and uh, it's 50-50 sand and peat, um, peat moss, as in the stuff that comes out of the ground, not not sphagnum moss. And they, they really like it. <clears throat> so this bulb is enormous. As you can see, it looks like a small palm tree, which is uh, often you know what you can see them growing on in uh, punctatum, growing on in Florida. The other guys are are terrestrial and so this is Certipodium varescens and I'll give you a little close-up of mix here you can see the the sand and peat and you can see the little fertilizer balls and, and I water these guys every single day with rainwater that I collect <clears throat> and um, I give them a very dry winter all of them except for one species polyphylum needs water throughout the winter and continues to get water maybe once a week kind of like a, a, a cattleya um, but all the rest of them basically I grow like a catacetum I don't water them for you know, probably the end of the November into to December uh, I think this year I'm going to extend my watering period towards the end of December into the end of December for my catacetums and my certipodiums just so they can have a little extra moisture um, before they start their new growths. But yeah, that's what I wanted to, to update y'all on. Um, I've got some other things growing here. You can see this, this desert rose or uh, it's growing next to it. <clears throat> and behind that, you can see the new greenhouse that I've mostly erected is mostly finished. And uh, I'll be hopefully filming videos from there this, this winter. Anyway, talk to you later. Bye. Also, while my kids are asleep um, and taking a nap, I have a little free time, so I figured I might as well show you uh, one of my catacetums that's blooming. This is Catacetum rhinophorum, excuse me, Catacetum tabulari uh, variety rhinophorum, and the tabulari has, the typical tabulari has a lot more brown in it. Uh, this particular variety does not have that. You can still see the very distinct um, sort of lip callus here that almost looks like a tongue. To me it looks like this plant is just perpetually sticking its tongue out and um, it's, it's mildly fragrant. Very, very sort of large flowers, you know, and very thin segments. Blooms a couple times a year. I got this from, uh, from Timothy Choltko last about this time last year he's the owner of harbinger orchids over in pennsylvania and i grow this using the pet method so i've got the the water well here in the bottom with the inorganic media i've got my large grade bark here and then um, very tightly packed sphagnum moss in there and I, I hit this with water every day and I also just noticed that I've got another spike coming out here. So this one will be, these guys will stay in bloom in this 100 degree heat, probably for three or four days, just open today. 
and then this new spike will come out and hopefully I'll have another round of flowers assuming it all goes well. Maybe even female flowers would be really great to breed with this one. We'll see. Saving a close up here for you. Kind of a cool one, very unusual. I really like this one. Thanks, Timothy. Talk to you later. Bye.